Welcome to the Utu na Mzarendo podcast. My name is Mwani Mwotemu Wakiyama, the founder of Mzarendo Halisi Foundation. Mzarendo Halisi Foundation amplifies ordinary Kenyans doing extraordinary things. In this episode, we feature the story of Dr. Clarence Eboso, a medical doctor. Dr. Eboso became famous when he appeared in the BBI case for himself and his organization, 254 Hope, and took on seasoned constitutional lawyers and minds um, and actually won. Listen to his amazing story. Dr. Eboso, Karibu Sana to the Utu Nauzalendo podcast. Thank you for Thank you. honoring our invite. Uh, the Utu Nauzalendo uh, podcast is about showcasing um, alternative Kenyan leadership, um, especially from a Utu perspective, people who um, providing leadership uh, to Kenyans, uh, to Kenya and to Kenyans. Uh, but basically not employed by Kenyans to provide that leadership. What we made you wengi. So part of the question to now Lisa Watu ni nani anawalipa. But then we'll get into that conversation later on because Kenyans are very much into that thing of money and uh, and service. Like you have to be paid to provide a service. So um, I'd like you to introduce yourself. Who is uh, Dr. Eboso? So my name is Dr. Clarence Boso Moresa. Uh, I'm a, a resident of Nairobi and Vihiga. Uh, I was actually born in Vihiga County, a place called uh, Bukulunya uh, in Vihiga, near Tavakali. Uh, Tavakali is quite famous, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then... Um, I, most of my childhood, I grew up in Nairobi uh, uh, with my dad. Uh, went to school initially at uh, Sav Academy in Sabatia, uh, that's class one and two. And then uh, uh, cl- from class four, I went to Langata West Primary School. Class seven, that was two, two or four. Two or four, uh, I was taken to boarding school in Bungoma, a school called Marel Academy. Then from there, uh, finished my uh, uh, primary school and uh, proceeded to high school. Mm. I went to, I went to Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> so you I went to Alliance. Alliance. Yeah. Uh, was there? t-shirt here, uh, I went to Alliance. Uh, almost, I, I almost <laughs> carried my jumper. I went to Alliance Livingstone House. Yeah. <laughs> Had a, quite an experience there. Uh, actually, sometimes I feel like uh, a big part of uh, what I do and how I think was actually shaped by my experiences uh, uh, at, at high school. Um, from there, waited some two years uh, before joining campus. And during those two years, most of what I did was uh, uh, network marketing. Uh, I joined this uh, one of these GNLD Forever living, and I uh, did quite some network marketing, and uh, that was quite some. Any reason? Character to make money or to well, it was to make money. Really, it was to make money. Uh, uh, but I, I, I appreciate. But I didn't make the money. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really appreciated the um, lessons that I, I picked from there. Uh, lessons on actual marketing actually expressing yourself and uh and 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 lessons on rejection and knowing that uh you still go to the next person and uh and 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 sell your product so network marketing was quite uh was quite foundational or quite um uh important in uh, in really making uh making me who I am now or uh, uh, giving me the skills that I have right now, particularly uh, the social skills and, uh, and, and selling. Uh, I also taught, actually, 
I think you probably know me as Mwalimu. Mm. <laughs> Mwalimu, yeah, that's on your, yes. on, your, on your Facebook, yes. especially. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I, for, for, for quite a while, I would be called Mwalimu because I taught uh, in a high school near home. Uh, home is in Gong. Uh, so I taught in some secondary school near there for a year and a half. Uh, during that period we were waiting to 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 join uh to join campus uh, is there any reason why you stayed out for two years yes th- i think those days uh you had to wait uh for the job intake because of the double intake or something no yeah. the double intake came later mm. the double intake now followed the year after i joined campus but prior to that i think the waiting period began in 93 there must have been a a long a prolonged strike in 93 which caused a delay and now from then on there was always a two year delay before joining campus uh it, it was in 2012 that there was a double intake to plug that gap and after that now guys no longer wait but we had to wait two years uh, uh but but it was a good time because it was uh, the time when you can now i mean you're an adult so you can basically do some of uh, these adult things out here yet again you're still a student so it was a sort of like a, a growing up period uh usually there's a proposal they poor proposed that people should not join join college immediately after finishing form 4 especially the in the uh, the A44 system yeah uh because remember the previous system you had you left high school you left secondary school yeah uh, uh did high school for two years yeah which uh, was thought to help you mature and then you went to now university yes um what do you think about that um i if if maturity is the is the the aim and then you know maturity is a function of time not so much a function of what you're doing uh, uh you can still mature while in in in, in college <laughs> uh, if there is another um uh, probably aim perhaps uh uh you you want to inculcate maybe that spirit of uh, self independence a young adult should be able to 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 break off from uh, parental um uh, control gradually then that 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 could help uh because now what we have is we have very many adults who are still babies uh they've never stepped out of their fathers or their mothers uh uh Uh, control control or so even homes yeah so i would support such a su- such a weight if that's the the goal the goal is uh, you are you have this period when you're not a student when your home is not very comfortable because you know the, the moment you're doing nothing at home there, there's going to be conflicts um at home because uh, you will you'll, you'll rub off with your parents every now and then because you're just uh, an adult you've just become an adult but then you're still in the house so you'll definitely have friction every now and then and that may really make you step out uh because really i feel like uh one of the reasons we actually have bad governance and uh, we have a society that is just in my opinion largely broken is because nobody is ever willing to stand up nobody is ever courageous enough to to say no or to and it's because most of our lives we've grown up under the control under the care under the the subsistence of other people of our parents and and, and the government and whatnot so that really gets into us so that even as a 40 year old you're afraid of uh, speaking out you're afraid of i mean you you you're oppressed but you can you, you don't speak out you'd rather try find out how you will oppress the next person and uh, take advantage of them as opposed to standing up and saying no to any sort of oppression so i feel like if we'll be able to inculcate that by maybe having a bridging period of 2 or 3 years uh, between when you're uh, you're fully a student dependent on your parents and when you're becoming a college uh uh college student independent of your parents then during that period you have a gradual process of 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 realization that you're your own person and that you you're not necessarily bound by by any other person maybe i would support that you you said the 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 the, the time the two years helped you figure out 
yourself a bit, you know, what you wanted to do, taught you some life skills. Um, you also had, for example, uh, I have a question around the, the first two years of your schooling. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were in, um, in an academy in, in Western Kenya, mm-hmm. well, did the, your parents move there? or Something about my life is that um, my parents got me while they were still in campus. And uh, the two never really got to 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 marry. Uh, my dad was 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 still in law school. My mom was pursuing education. Uh, I thought it was Egerton, or I believe it it was Egerton, but I think those days Egerton was not in Akuru. Uh, someone told me it was in like Kipia. or maybe a college. Yes, a constant college, Pro- probably. Yeah. So uh, so earlier on. I think I stayed with my mom for like a year or two and then my dad took me up uh, and I stayed with my dad till 97 through nursery school. Uh, but in 98, I happened to go stay with my mom. Uh, and it was during the time I was staying with my mom in 98 that uh, that was class one. I was at Mosoli mixed primary school because uh, uh, my mom was a teacher at Mosoli secondary. Um, and then after that, my mom got married to someone else. And I think traditionally or culturally, uh, in the Luya culture, the children belong to the father. So uh, my mom couldn't get into that new marriage with uh, me and my sister. Uh, with, with, there was two of us, with me and my sister. Same so, father? Yes, same father. So we... We therefore went to stay with my grandma. And it was at the time when I was staying with my grandma that I was studying at uh, Sav Academy. That's class two and three. Around that time, uh, I think my dad uh, decided to now take us up because now he too had now established another family and was uh, established in Nairobi. So he took us up and uh, from uh, class four, that's when now I was staying again with, 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 with him now together with my sister, my stepmom, and uh, my the other siblings who now came up uh, around that time. So the reason I've asked that is that it, it, it seems like you had another early introduction into independence again. Yes. Uh, I picked that up. Like, y- y- yes. Uh, but it's very interesting also the Luya culture where y- the yes. child, children belong to the... Yes, they belong to the father. To the, and and uh, I've heard stories of all women can remarry and just move on and leave their kids behind. Yes. I, um, as a Kikuyu, That's I think that is totally of. impossible and yeah. hard of. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for Luya, I think for uh, Luya, I suspect Luo too, I suspect, I don't know if Kisi is that way, uh, but I know Luya's, Luo's, uh, I don't know how Kalenjins are, but Luya's and Luo certainly, the child, children belong the, I think when the college uh, and the children belong to the to the father to the father yeah, yeah. Uh, ah, so do you have a relationship with your did you have you had a relationship with your mom yes 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 um somehow um I think the 98 year that I stayed with my mom uh uh that's the time when I would say probably I got to relate with her closely uh uh a bit short-lived uh, but then uh, even afterwards because uh, when I was in uh, primary school in Bungoma by then my mom my mom was working in Bungoma also uh, she was working at uh, uh, Kimilili she was a teacher there and uh, she would come and visit me at, at, at the school in Bungoma that was in class 7 and 8 uh, when I was at Alliance uh, she would come once in a while to visit and um interestingly uh my mom actually had a cordial relationship with uh, my stepmom now the the one i was living with here in nairobi they had a cordial relationship and uh a- and so there are times even my mom would visit us at home uh with my stepmom and and, and yeah so we kind of maintained a, a relationship and up to now, I mean, I was talking to her just this morning. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's a very interesting. Uh, I think for it's very hard for Akiku to conceptualize yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. um, and especially uh, people who've grown up in the last maybe three decades, whereby uh, mothers are, are very possessive of their kids. Um, 
so and 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 there's there are a lot of cases of men not taking responsibility so your your case talks of, of the reverse where the culturally the the lawyer man has yes. to take responsibility he, and he actually did uh, <laughs> yeah and you turned out well <laughs> <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully you know um uh, every, every, everybody seems to look like they turned out well until you go into their personal lives and then you realize oh, we are quite a wreck I we need therapy <laughs> <laughs> i'll but, trust your heart for that you're uh, a doctor <laughs> okay no but, but I, i i totally agree we we are a society uh, that is Uh, has undergone many traumas yeah. some which are not even uh, we've not acknowledged mm-hmm. you know for example things like uh, slavery mm-hmm. colonialism uh, the war of independence i think traumatized our ancestors quite a lot mm-hmm. um, a subsequent was the nation state came we had a government that uh, decided to character developers uh, developers is still character yeah. developing us yeah. um And, uh, and of course now that's that's societal but also at personal level i think there's a way that that affects uh individuals within a society um and their ability to function i think um, and, and uh, i think that's a conversation that that really needs to be had i don't know yeah i've i've i've, uh, I've thought about the the broken nature of the african society uh and and uh I've, i've 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 often asked myself whether there is something uh whether it's th- th- there's actually something there's a problem with the africanness uh and 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 now that you bring up the issue of slavery uh maybe it explains look i've always wondered some of the things we do to ourselves are things that other people never do to themselves you see and i i would trace it back to even slavery you look at most of uh, the world where slavery was practiced it was a rule a natural law that you cannot enslave your own people so that the romans had slaves but the slaves were never romans the arabs had slaves but the slaves were never arabs uh when uh, the americans had slavery those slaves were never americans it was almost like it was natural a natural law that you cannot enslave your own but here in africa we were enslaving our own we were wailing our brother uh when they are coming from the the river or whatever and selling them off to the arabs to go and be slaves selling them off at the western coast uh the west african coast to go and be slaves and we sort of systemized it we made it normal okay and i feel it is that um uh, institutionalized selfishness i don't i don't if individual i don't know if it's individuality yeah. or uh, that in institutionalized uh, selfishness that make us very um uh, suspicious of one another and it makes us not able to actually work as a community and know that we are a community and we need to look out for each other that's why you will have an african leader uh you saw this gabon was is the gabon president who was deposed the other day and you look at the kind of opulence they live in and you look at the kind of broken country they govern and you're just like no this can't be okay they are dying of hunger we are a country where we have people dying of hunger every other year but then we also have people living in opulence and they don't care we have a government where the people in government are actually there to loot a good number of them they actually budget to loot uh, president kenyatta there's a point president kenyatta said mnataka nifanye nini i have also started getting the same vibe from president ruto he's not he may not be saying it but i can see part of his frustration now that he's seated there and it's almost like this whole corruption and this whole animal is bigger than anyone you see and i think it's an institutionalized form and it's it cuts across the entire of africa it's not just in kenya i've actually you see um, been part of people who have reframed this yeah uh, because you look at the colonial state it was created to extract yes. so it's actually a colonial extractive state yes 
and what we call independence, the people who took over power yeah. at independence were yes. those who were serving the colonial yes. extractive state. Yes. And so all they did was just continue extracting. Yes. So they don't know when you talk about corruption, mm -hmm. Them, the them corruption is corruption. bribery. Yeah. They don't see it as, they yeah. see it as the function of the state is to do what exactly what yeah. it's doing. Uh, and even colonialism, you, you saw why colonialism was so entrenched and so successful in Africa as opposed to any other place was because we Africans, we ourselves were the ones being used to actually um, uh, exploit our fellows, our fellow Africans. And I look at that and I'm like, now, now that you mentioned it, I'm thinking about it and I'm looking at one of the things that is different between other societies and perhaps the African society right from the traditional setup was the idea of freedom, the idea of independence, having the freedom to actually think and, and uh, espouse your own ideas. I feel like that may be what lacked in Africa. And it's what was adopted in most of these other places early on. Because once you have freedom, you'll be able to, freedom of thought, you'll be able to speak your mind even if other people disagree with you. Okay? And you'll keep speaking it until people will start seeing your point. And probably that's what the Arabs had. That's what, because I know the Arabian culture is actually, although it usually looks dictatorial from from our perspective, they actually have rules, uh, very natural rules that uh, they protect uh, the messenger. Uh, the, a messenger is never punished. They protect the freedom to speak and, and things like those. And probably such like things were able to make the society grow so that even when they, they were entertaining slavery, they would be, someone would stand up and say, no, you can't enslave your own and, and, and so on and so forth. And here, we sort of were this community where you you do as everybody does. Once the elder says. Once the elders say. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, absolute power always corrupts. So now once elders had absolute power, then, uh, uh, and, and you couldn't talk, you trying to stand up and talk and whatnot, you'd be sold off. Or even slavery, question, or yeah. Excommunicated and mm. whatnot. Mm. And, uh, and, 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 and that may have actually dimmed now our growth as a society. And, uh, and maybe, just maybe, that is why we've ended up, and, and you know, it feeds on each other. Once we were sailing off, I, I, I went to Zanzibar in 2018, and I was looking at those caves where these slaves were being sold and, uh, and, and traded and whatnot, and I really felt bad because I was like, no, I mean, how, do, how does a society recover from that? With the chains and money yes. and How does a society recover? How do you recover from your brother selling you off to, to be a slave? How do you recover from that? That's trauma. And, and, uh, and uh, how it's do very people, interesting. How do my children? Yesterday's headline is that uh, Saudi Arabia is going to take 500,000 Kenyans, according to the president. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Google and whoever will take, I don't know how many other. Yeah. Which, of course, is their lies. Uh -huh. But it's still the same modern slavery. Yes, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a concept that we, 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 we need to look at. And uh, the problem is these guys don't even tell us what are the arrangements, what, are the, what is the actual agreement you have. Because the, 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 the line between slavery and, uh, and actual selling your labor is a very thin line and it's in fine details. So if you if 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 we are not gonna see what agreement you've gotten with the Saudi Arabians uh, to have our workers going there, uh, we could easily be simply taking advantage of uh, of uh, of of our uh, our needy or a poor uh, population and selling them off for a song. Actually, it's arguable, arguably the last 400 years yeah. uh, have yeah. run, the planet has run on slavery from yeah. the actual slavery, so yeah. free labor. To, to, to now sophisticated To now slavery. sophisticated wage slavery. Yes. I read somewhere yesterday that actually now the slavery has moved over to the computer yeah. or to the digital devices where we are, we are doing all these through social media, providing data, which is the new oil and all that. And um, without even realizing it, we are caught up in in that just that swiping and then yeah. uh, you know because the way the world has structured the, the the world has structured the economic environment it looks liberal it looks free it looks independent it looks very nice but i think it's biased i've i mean the owners of capital the owners of uh, of 
like where we are starting you know there's the, there's a point at which you start the game and you, the rules start applying it it already starts when one person is 2-0 down and then you're expecting that they will play at uh like now the rules should be applied fairly i don't think fairness is that's how fairness works although the rules are designed by the same yes. orders of capital yes. and they designed it in a manner that looks fair but they knew that uh it only looks fair but there is no way you will ever beat them at it because they already started with a head start and, and the, from now on and the field is there yes and the, the ref is there so mm. at some point we will have as a society to be bold enough to still adopt aspects of the of the society or the the the, the, the economic environment aspects that are fair sindo but then at the same time recraft our uh our working to make um uh, cognizance of uh the fact that we started late the playing field is not ours because we might talk about um uh, education as the key to 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 success and all but somehow because i've been i've been um, i've been attending some um some uh, 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 economic forums uh and uh there is one uh, i'm i'm actually uh, undergoing that uh, uh preaches libertarianism okay that uh, talks about libertarianism mm. and its ideas what and is its the foundation briefly um uh, libertarianism essentially is um, if you if you look at how the republican um uh, system in the united states is uh, their ideologies and what not now libertarians seem to be a more radical version of the republicans mm. less government yes less, less government, taxation less taxation the individual rights to defend yourself and 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 what not and even the economic model makes quite a lot of sense okay uh I've, i'm also currently uh, attending uh some trainings on communism uh, with the communist party of kenya i've uh, been attending for the last three months are you a member um uh, i wouldn't say i'm a member uh but 254 hope decided to sort of like a uh, uh partner with them to just educate because mm. so, yeah. let's 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 step back yeah. uh, so that we talk about 254 hope then yeah. we'll come into that yeah. okay um so um so you finished high school and you've gone to alliance yeah. let's step back like yeah. mm-hmm. i want to see how how that transition from alliance comes to where you are there's something that um that that i that i found in alliance that is quite unique Alliance is really a replica of the colonial system or at least while I was there it was a true replica of uh, the colonial system uh where you have an organized system uh where you have uh, students governing themselves okay they are not they were not really fully elected there was an element of election but uh, largely they were appointed okay and prefects were most were all form 4s okay they would become prefects in form 3 third term and then they'd be captains in form 4 and uh, for the whole year you'd be just form 4s who were prefects uh and the prefect system was a very hierarchical one and a very organized and uh, it, it was like the nobility and they were very powerful like essentially you would be you could be suspended from school by a prefect or even a teacher could be fired a kind yes a teacher could be of a yes could be could be actually um uh, uh face some some disciplinaries here and there on recommendation of uh, the prefect body and what not and in fact the hierarchy was such that it was the principal the deputy principal the school captain and deputy school captain that was how the the order of uh, of precedence something like that yeah eh uh, that, that that's how it was so i went to njeri school it was yeah. almost the same yeah mm. and what i learned there was that uh in that environment you probably have to toe the line a certain way in order to get to the highest level of the society okay so i remember um uh, uh, in form 1 I, i was this rebellious uh form 1 I'd, i'd be on punishment parade almost every day uh and and aside from even the prefect system now I was uh, because I was I was exactly <laughs> like that yeah? now aside from the prefect the formal prefect system there was another formal local government system in the various houses which was which also followed that same 
sort of like hierarchy and what not so it's almost like you'd have to work from from one you're the lowest of the lowest then from from two you start uh uh presenting yourself and we used to call it lifting you start lifting to become a house committee member then you become a house committee member in form 3 then you continue lifting and uh and what not then you become a prefect in form 3 uh end of form 3 and you become a captain in form 4 and so it's almost like i followed that hierarchy and rose to sort of like the highest prefect yeah. at alliance you were school captain no yeah. now at alliance mm. the school captain is like the queen yeah. of england or the king <laughs> now okay so it's yeah. quite ceremonial yeah. like they give speeches during functions and events they welcome the president when the president visits they they essentially they they are a ceremonial role okay but the position that was like the prime minister now you're in charge of the rest of the prefects you're in charge of discipline in the school not not was now the deputy school captain yes. which i was yeah. yeah it was the administrative yes yeah. and and so it was while i was deputy school captain that i sort of uh so the world a bit differently because now i had to balance between maintaining discipline in school so i have to be really stern uh maintaining discipline within the prefect body because the prefect body was answering to me uh and still uh have the prefect body work in a manner that will maintain order in the school because really in alliance teachers were not were not were not uh were not coming were not managing the school teachers were purely for teachers. No, that's that's I think most of those provincial national schools were yeah. structured like that. Yeah. yeah. So uh and 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 there was this this constant conflict between students and prefects, between junior prefects and senior prefects because there was also a, hier- a hierarchy. And I remember one um uh, specific instance where I forcefully tried to bring some fairness uh within the prefect's body and I had the entire prefect's body fighting me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on, on very flimsy things it was i think biscuits there were some biscuits that prefects would get every month and the the manner in which these biscuits were shared was quite um irrational so now we had this pentagon uh which was the five top prefects and the pentagon had an office to themselves within that office there was a white house which was now my office and the school captain and then the other three pentagon members uh were shared the other space okay uh and then there was senior prefects who were called the captains and then there were junior prefects who are still from fours but they were not captains now the junior prefects were like 30 or or, or there about so 40 the captains were like the house 20. prefects class prefects no yeah. dom prefects dom, dom. yes dom uh, prefects mm. uh, we didn't have class prefects in in alliance so they were dom prefects and then house captains and other captains it captains medical captain uh, games captains one of those were now captains so we had five pentagon members and then we had uh, around 20 or uh, 18 to 20 captains and then we had like 30 or 40 junior prefect so these biscuits were four boxes okay and then somehow um one box would go to the school captain and the deputy school captain mm. in the white house mm. and then traditionally uh because this i was also the custodian of the historical documents so i had some of those so traditionally the other another box would go to the other three pentagon members and then the other two boxes would be shared one for the senior prefects and another for the uh, the junior prefects okay but what had happened over time because um uh, those biscuits were being distributed by the dining hall team the dining hall prefects they had uh, taken up one box for themselves so now you'd have a situation where you have three boxes of biscuits coming to five prefects that is one box for school captain and deputy school captain the other box for the dining hall captain and his three dining hall uh, uh junior prefects and then one box for the entertainment captain and the games captain who are the other two two pentagon members and then now one box to all the other 50 prefects so i looked at that and i was like that's nonsense that can't continue because the work that's done actually is done mostly by these people so i said we are going to revert the kind of backlash i got and you know the interesting thing i got the backlash from one the captains mm. the ones who will go to the chair the ones who go to the chair and then somehow also from the junior prefects 
And then I wondered what, what was going on here. Uh, and then, of course, also from the Pentagon guys, because they were feeling like I'm encroaching into their, their space, because they were like, uh, you, you guy, you have your biscuits, nini nakusumbua? You get? And me, I'm like, no, that's not going to so happen. So you're being an activist, yet you're supposed to be a leader to yes. enforce the system. <laughs> yeah. Is. So anyway, eventually I had my way, mm. uh, and I even had the the deputy principal uh, decree that uh, they leave and add another box now for for even the Form 3 prefects when they are, they are actually... Now what happened is, uh, Form 3 prefects also came on board towards that term. And then I was now agitating to have them also get, because they do most of the work. Okay, and I think that's where the junior prefects were fighting me. So it's almost like it was a society where we have structured it into hierarchies, and then anytime you try to bring a semblance of equality, even the junior, most of the junior in the hierarchy, um, uh, complains because they too have this hope that they will also get to some hierarchical, they'll, they, 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 they'll also climb and whatnot. You know, you introduce that as quite colonial in alliance, yeah, but that's actually a microcosm of the Kenyan society, yeah, today, yeah. So nobody wants to to change anything because everybody hopes they will just jump to the next level and then op- be the and, oppressor and be the up. oppressor and then again they will jump to another and be the oppressor and whatnot. So I remember that one instance uh, that it it really it was such a conflict where I'm having everybody, including the ones I'm trying to assist, fighting me and I'm like, what was going on? Um, uh, muizi, muizi, as, uh, you know that, as, that yeah. kind of narrative. Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, and, um, I mean um, uh, the, that position was one one position where you'd uh, you'd actually be hated by by a lot of the students. And I remember students, by prefects, time, yeah, maybe even teachers. Yes. Mm. In fact, in fact, I had uh, I had actually some run-ins with some uh, some teachers, and uh, I could have probably even gone to New York University at some point uh, after high school, but mm. a scholarship. Yes, for a scholarship. Yeah. But basically, the teacher who was supposed to to write for me uh, my transcripts just refused. Uh, of course, he said, oh, you know, we are not sure how you will perform, so we can't uh, edit these transcripts and whatnot and whatnot. We just have to wait for your KCSE results and whatnot. Anyway, I eventually uh, did quite well. Like, I mean, I eventually outdid what... So that's did. the thing. That's like you're, you're managing all these politics. Yeah. That's uh, student politics and yeah. school politics. And uh, you still have... You, you're still a student. You still yes. have to... Yes. To do what, uh, what you had to do. Yeah. To pass your exams and all. Yeah. I remember one of the things the pri- the principal of the school and the deputy principal actually were quite sub- were, like really liked me and uh, I think they they could see that uh, I was different from even most of the other prefects who'd been there before in the other years uh, in the sense that I had this sense of fairness that I was pushing for and I remember it's, it's during when I was a prefect that for the first time we had an inspection of prefects uh, prefects common rooms and prefects study rooms because um, uh, at some point I realized that we uh, we prefects enforce the law uh, we go confiscating radios and uh, uh, radios were allowed but not these small palitos these palitos were, were were proscribed so we'd go confiscating them and confiscating phones from from students and whatnot okay but then I realized the prefects actually had these things in their common rooms and at some point it got so bad that i was worried that um that these prefects could actually be used to cheat in in kcc and it could endanger the results of the school so i went and talked to the principal and the deputy the deputy was a mr kiptum kibet uh may god rest his soul in peace yeah he passed on while at sunshine um uh, and i explained to them that look we have a situation where uh, we protect prefects so much but we have a situation where um, uh, uh, they are the ones having the ones these, who are, these radios and, yeah. this, and these uh, mm. uh, phones in school. So the situation it's of gonna do as I do, not as I say. You see, do as I say, not as yes. I do. Mm. And some of them are even hiding these phones for other students. And it's going to endanger us uh, as a school. Because I remember in 2007, we had our results nullified. A uh, big part of uh, the results uh, for uh, Alliance students were nullified. And I told them that we are going to have that if we do not really rein in on this. And I remember for the first time I went f- for an inspection, uh, being uh, leading house masters now. Now these were teachers, the house masters. And we did an inspection of prefects' home rooms. Prefects were 
scandalized on your they own initiative yes 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 they really hated me in fact it was uh, by the time we were graduating i was not just hated by students i was hated by prefects guys who were prefects <laughs> like me because because they were feeling like uh niliwakalia sana but you see we really confiscated quite a number of phones and i i, I actually do believe that uh, part of why um uh, we survived our, our results survived that year was because of that because i think there are schools that uh, were said to have cheated that year and what not but at least as we confiscated these things a bit it was a month just before the exam started and what not and so uh, one of the things the principal was worried was how i will perform because traditionally guys who had been deputy school captains all the way to the end used to be the ones who get Cs at alliance you know getting a c at alliance was like uh, i mean you're the last one and uh, and so the principal was very worried that uh, i might end up following that route so they were really rooting for me i remember the last exam uh, just before kcc i i got to the top 20 and i got a standing ovation from the teachers yeah. when the results were called like they were like wow yeah. um and then i think they were the happiest when the results the kcc results came out and uh, and i think i had uh, i had done so well like i mean i was in the papers i mean you went to so, do uh, medicine so it must yeah. have been quite well so, yes so the principal was really 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 happy uh, his name was dj karuki uh, i've not met him since then the deputy principal kibet kiptum then was extremely elated cuz it sort of showed that you can actually do the right thing you can actually do the work because i was on duty when other prefects um sort of like refused to work towards the end towards kcc because they said they were reading so they refused to work i remained on duty all the way up to during the exam and, and, and so that's the politics happy. of this yeah so very rebellious in form one yeah but i sense that you strategically hide that position like you yes kind of either reformed or organized yes. yourself yes to end up being the deputy school captain yes. what, what what was the thought process behind that i think i've always wanted to make a difference somehow i don't know why but i've always wanted to make a difference and uh i think i quickly learned uh from how the system too uh-huh. this is how the system works like uh, you'll have to lift you'll have to really uh uh climb the hierarchy and uh and as long as you can stick to certain principles and ideals you you'll do well so i think i think that's what that's that's how it went anyway let's go and to you're able, you know and you're able to do to reform now this is yes 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 um uh, in fact uh when i left there used to be this uh culture where prefects were bullies okay uh where prefects would be an unrestrained bullies and what not and i remember from when i left the place i think that had changed like uh we had more of a student student leadership and uh and i think we made uh the the successive uh we used to call them cops the successive cops to sort of uh, realize that uh you can actually you can actually just be a good a good cop and uh, and still do do your work yeah so hopefully it we, we, we worked on that and 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 and, uh, and and changed a few things here and there but you see once you leave you leave and uh, uh, it's about well, now what the other people will make of their world uh, when they are left in charge so now you you're out of alliance uh, you spent two years uh, at home where you you learn you do marketing you do all manner of things and then you end up at the was on Nairobi to do medicine how was that experience um first the transition um the network marketing really made me reach out to a lot of people and uh, get to talk, to know how to talk to random people strangers and sell to them uh and get rejected and still move to the next person uh teaching also gave me an opportunity to to address uh impressionable minds and inspire uh and i think that uh, what did you teach in high school i taught physics chemistry and biology yeah sciences yes i taught the sciences um and then i was working with uh with the teachers there who are also quite young and uh and, and and i remember uh interacting with them so deeply uh and forming lasting partnerships with some of them uh some of them are still my 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 friends even now uh we meet up often um joined university now 
one of the things when I was leaving high school, remember I told you I had this unenviable position where I have uh, my colleagues, my fellow from fours. In fact, let me take you back to high school. There is this time uh, in third term when uh, form fours did not want to take um, uh, uh, to take in uh, instructions from form three prefects because now we were in form four and now form three prefects have just been appointed and so they are the ones who are in charge. My fellow form four prefects had declined to most of them had uh, declined to work as prefects anymore because they felt like they needed to read which i mean it's fair they needed to read for the exams so the school was essentially being run by form three prefects and form fours now the form four non prefects did not want to take instructions from form threes because form threes are their juniors and so this time the form fours organized uh what i would say was like a strike or a Protest. a sitting so they decided um uh, lights out was supposed to be at 11 okay they decided they are going to extend and uh when from three prefects come they will beat them up okay so from fours actually left the dorm areas to go to class and because it's not all of them but a majority of them mm. like uh out of the five streams like four streams like enough people to fill four streams which were in one block. So they all went to that block and sat. And they came with hockey sticks and sat in class. So they were waiting for Form 3s to come. When Form 3s come, they'll cause some chaos here and there. And then the chaos will degenerate into just violence and whatnot. So I was briefed about it. Uh, and I decided that day, I would... Uh, normally, in uh, third term, I would go sleep at 7. Uh, I had my own sleeping place i would go sleep at seven i i valued my sleep so because from three prefects would work they would just wake me up if there's anything so that day i was told in time so i decided it's okay i'll stay up and then i will go for the round with them i will go for the parade with them so at uh 10 45 p.m i called all the from three prefects and told them i'll take you around today so we'll go all of us uh, so that we see what is gonna happen so we go and uh true the entire um, uh, uh, form fours had actually sat in, in class and uh, they were not leaving, but it's lights out time. They need to go. Okay. So I walked into the first class with the form three prefects and uh, I told them, okay, I don't know what's happening, but you guys need to go sleep. It's time for bed. So I want you guys to go out. Uh, they were just looking at me. Uh, so I started calling them one by one. So I called uh, the first person who was there. Get out. So I think I, I think at that time I was quite intimidating. Uh, for sure, that position has an, a big aura, for sure. So the guy stood up and went out. Then I called the next one. They stood up and went out. Then the third one, then the fourth one. So eventually they all stood up and started walking out. Of course, they were walking out and then some of them start going, but some of them go into the other class. So I go to the other class. So we lock this class. I go to the next one. I do the same. Uh, so that by the time we were leaving, there was just a few, like five, who had stood their ground and refused to leave, which was fine. But to uh, but majority were actually walking out. Of course, they were walking out and shouting and saying like, ah, nini na nini. At some point, they even tried to throw stones at us. But it was funny that they would they would be in a dark spot and then they'd throw stones. And then I would, uh, I think I was also a bit mad because I would actually walk towards them and then they would run away. <laughs> you and you're all alone. It's just me. Yeah. 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 And you're not, I mean, physically, I, you're not I, I'm not big. I'm not like, uh, I didn't even have any weapon or any, like it was just me. Uh, but I think it's the system, the system. I think it had inculcated that, that, uh, that mindset. You know, you know, this story of uh, an, an elephant when you grow up, no, my fungia kwando. It's initially it couldn't move it, but now even when it's an elephant, a big elephant, it still thinks it can't move it. I think that was the the situation. So from that day, even the other form fours, now my fellow classmates, felt that I had slighted them. The rest of the form fours now also feel like I have slighted them by standing with the form three prefects to ensure the law as it is or the rules as they are are observed. 
okay and then i think the fact that they were really i mean they felt very you know when uh, one person intimidates you that much you also get some resentment so i think they got quite resentful and you had personalized it by calling them by name yes. like stand if you're going to stand yes. up stand up and yeah. stand your ground yes so um uh, they actually resented me and uh, by the time i was leaving from four i actually had very few friends from my peers okay and it will play out even in in uni I'll, I'll i'll show you how it played out i had very few friends among my peers i think because they they had this resent resentment but i didn't i didn't hate them i don't really think even uh, their hate was because i did anything personally to any of them in fact by the a, 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 a good number of times i would i actually even uh, introduced a certain counseling system because i realized when i was uh, the deputy school captain in charge of discipline that uh, the people who are most in discipline actually had troubles at home family troubles okay and uh, and and their indiscipline was really a projection of what is happening at home so i actually introduced a system where we would actually counsel these people and uh, and and look into what is going on at home and and things like those so basically i really I, i feel like i really tried to 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 be fair and what not so they didn't really have i don't i don't really believe uh there is anyone who can point to uh any one instance where i abused my power as a cop and i remember one of the days when i was leaving uh w- when we were just leaving the last day when we were leaving alliance one of the oldest teachers there actually called me and asked me um are you related to uh okel um okel was i think uh, a, a guy who was a deputy school captain in 98 like 10 or so years 11 years earlier that you really your character is like his and uh even you look like him and what not so i told him no i don't then he told me that i want you to know this that for the i think he had been there for close to 16 years for the 16 years that i've been a teacher in this school i have never seen a deputy school captain like you like your your levels of integrity your forthrightness your hard work i have never seen someone like you and i i felt really that was quite a compliment yeah yeah it was quite a compliment and that yeah. isn't was mr gishuhi affirmation yeah. yes like yeah. I, i i really felt quite appreciated and what not and, and you see mr gishuhi was a house master so he actually saw all these things i had been doing and i think he knew from where i was coming from including the inspection uh, the prefect inspection including even the biscuit saga including the form 3 saga like he had actually been part of it and he had been seeing what was happening you see so he he actually told me that and I was like okay so i don't really believe even to now i've always asked like i would want someone to come out and tell me like this one time you did this uh that was very unfair yeah. so how does this play out into now your end so now i joined your yeah. end yeah. and number one, i have already gone through this experience where i have been uh, resented by my peers okay and right from the first day when i stepped into you 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 are in i knew that this is a different environment this is not an environment this is a different system there are different rules that apply here and i remember right from day one, i was talking to everyone i was meeting like i'm uh, I, i i was talking to people as though mimi ni mwenyeji in fact the rest of you f- uh, first years who've come you've come and me I'm, i was already here like in fact some of them were wondering what's wrong with this guy is this guy a first year also because i was talking to this one and then i finished talking to this one i'm talking to this one and asking them all sorts of things about them and what not like almost like just um creating a new community of friends and i i didn't stop there like i mean that was like how now i was all through from one is that from two part of your experience of uh, being a school cap deputy school captain yes. but also the network marketing yes i think this was both from network marketing perspective and also i i, I could feel the la- the lack of touch uh lack of being in touch with the rest of the people when i was a deputy school captain and then now i knew that out here if i'm to make friends i really have to be part of the community i really have to know their stories i really have to um talk to them uh, you get like i can't be aloof yeah and so i think right from day one, that's how and i and actually there's no it. the hierarchy is not there yes there's no hierarchy and uh this actually helped me it played because i made so many friends uh in my class uh and even now a good number of my 
classmates are just my really good good friends many of them are the ones who helped me set up um, a hospital in Vihiga I'll tell you about that uh, later this ended up playing out in um, campus politics because uh, in second year I tried to vie for to be a faculty rep but I I stepped out of the race uh before be, before 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 the end uh mostly because the other person who was vying was my colleague and uh sort of espoused the same things that I I I I believe uh uh I espoused like we espoused the same things so I was like uh, we'll both vie and then we'll both lose so we talked and uh we were able to agree that I'll just campaign for him and uh and and so he became the faculty rep uh we then uh went to form year three uh, year three not from three year three and in year three is when i uh another f- friend of mine dr moriuki vied to be the vice chair of uh, the student association medical students association and i campaigned vehemently for him i campaigned like so strongly for him he almost got it he missed by two votes and uh you see that this was a position that was reserved for uh third years and third years going to fourth year but we were actually vying for it when we were second years going to third year and 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 yeah and uh and and we did quite well we lost by i think four votes uh, uh but it was okay so now by the time i got to fourth year i think i had enough experience as a uh, in, in student politics and now i vied to be president of our student association and and got it in uh, fourth year yes in um, fourth year these are like how many year course five year course so that should have been a fifth year no it's actually fourth years going to fifth years because fifth years won't be there once they graduate uh so i vied for it just at the time when i should have vied for it and i got it and uh i noticed something about the race that race was an interesting race uh because it actually pitted uh, uh the muslim community against the rest of the of the of the students uh we had this there was this notion that had been uh, cultivated that muslims only vote for their own okay uh and 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 medical school actually had quite a sizable population of muslims and uh i think the notion came about mostly because the muslim community was a bit removed from the rest so access to them to win their votes was a bit difficult while any muslim candidate they had this musaun um uh, medical students association of uh, muslim students association of i think university of nairobi they, they they already had this platform where they would talk amongst themselves and so they would share their campaign messages and so naturally then the people that muslims will vote for will be their fellow muslims not because so much because they are just voting for their fellow muslims but because they are the ones who have access to them and can campaign to them they already a community yes so the race actually took that turn and uh at some point we sat with our campaign team and asked ourselves whether we wanted to take that turn or not but you see it was already taking that turn and so i remember uh at some point it became that way. but i remember still going to campaign among the muslims and uh talking to them and there is actually some two friends of mine uh in fact uh one of my best friend is actually a muslim and we actually um uh, knew each other from those campaigns and when we got elected together and they were telling me that uh, they had their friends who are saying that uh uh i mean i know msaun is telling us to vote for these candidates but this guy has come and talked to me and i'll vote for him and what not things like those so that was something that i learned about that race and i was like uh, okay uh i think once you're in the politics this thing can get beyond you you may not want it to take that route but it will it will take that route and there's nothing you because it's another it. system yes, again it's a whole system and uh, it can even overtake you so that sometimes we talk about our politics being tribal and we blame our leaders but no some of them get caught up in it like you may you may not even want it to take that tribal angle but i mean i i usually say there are leaders who i don't think politics taking a tribal angle ever serves them uh, uh well so they would probably rather not 
but this thing is bigger than them. it gets bigger than them like at that high level it gets bigger than you and you just have to play with the with the I, I guess the lesson there uh, i think even from uh, from allies all the way to your end is that it takes a lot of courage to to be able to to challenge the the status quo yeah um and and because not because people don't have that courage yeah. but uh, the heavy wow. lifting involved yeah and the resentment and uh, the um, society kind of ostracizes you if you're not part of uh, yes because uh, what i'm hearing from you and now it's starting to 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 come out is um, you actually an activist uh, despite uh, <laughs> even maybe not even positions. referring to yourself as that uh, uh, but uh, that's actually the life of an activist it's, uh, it's usually very lonely uh, and, and sometimes challenging the system I don't know what you think about yeah, that. It's true. In fact, um uh, I was I was going to tell you how my alliance played out now in the politics. Now, in med school, we had almost like 70 people or 80 yeah. from alliance. Of course, the majority had okay. come from alliance. And yeah. uh, 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 uh from my class at least, okay? So, my class in med school had uh, maybe 300 people and 80 were from alliance. Okay? Um uh out of this 80 imagine the only alliance students former alliance students who supported me were like 15 only the rest still that resentment from from high school they were just like we can't support this guy he harassed us in high school and what not but you'd want to pick out when did i actually harass you like what was this one moment that you can point to where i actually did this and they were just like uh uh no so like that played out and uh, i remember guys now guys who are we're not from alliance yeah. yeah these yeah. guys who are not from alliance you remember they were my friends remember when i got to med school i was like making friends and what not so they would ask me like i mean why are your fellow alliance guys not supporting you like none of them is supporting you and uh, and uh, i mean i was just like yeah uh, old scars i mean we are going to heal some day and uh, the good thing is um is i think even when i won it was very gracious and a good number of them now we, we saw yeah, of, of course like, now uh, they have to own you we had the uh, tribal uh, thing uh we the we, alliance tribe now uh, right. <laughs> yeah uh, and then we had reunions and what not and uh, we sort of buried the hatchet and uh, to a large extent actually my biggest um, uh, friends now are actually those same same guys we nowadays we argue over everything over bbi over what and what and uh, we are friends now like we sort of like uh, uh, are good and, and and but yeah but it played out and so uh, that made me realize that okay because as i told you i do take accountability that uh, the system at high school was colonial. required yeah. that and it was not a good system okay it was not uh, that's what the kind of leadership that we generally want you don't want the kind of leadership where it's a bossy kind of leadership the the kind of leadership you want is a people centered leadership now the kind of leader i think i was when i was in in um in 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 your end in med school uh that's probably the kind of leadership we'd we'd, we'd want but that's not the kind of leadership that the system at alliance allowed mm-hmm. and it's you actually see? by design yes uh, because uh, the, the 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 school system basically the education system uh, which was quite colonial which is it is up to now was meant to nurture people into the the colonial uh, produce clerks managers supervisors etc etc head teachers or department managers to actually serve the colonial system and that was the incubation space that's where this leadership was and then of course these people would end up um, i don't know how you get end up in a consultancy or maybe the school captains because of uh, the politicians would end up in the in the working for the price waterhouse cooper yes yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where they went to yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's where they went to and, and mm. the banks and you know the, yes. the colonial superstructure yeah mm. i realized that uh things that you do in the past actually do come to to to, to haunt you later and uh and and it doesn't really matter that the system in the past uh required that uh you still take account you still take the slack and you still have to so you met who you you elected um, um 
the, the what, what was the position Chair, chairman of the of, of the medical, medical students association, association. Mm. how was your term and then uh, mm. after that i must say that i think uh, while president of the medical students association i think that's when i got to interact with the most money i've ever interacted with because uh, we were managing a budget of close to 15 million that year where from uh from the university mm. uh we were we, we had to organize these events that uh, required money and part of the money would be given by the university i also needed to go look for partners out there to sponsor some of the events and so maybe out of the 15 million that year maybe like 8 million came from external sponsors 7 million came from the university and um and and i, I think it was managing that, that amount of money as a student that was quite eye opening like i was like how many were you I, I think that's a, why, the, in the leadership in the leadership we were seven or eight uh but really uh the, the chairman was really central uh i think i was central to all the things that were happening and all the management that was happening i was uh largely assisted by the treasurer and uh two other i think the ex editor or external affairs secretary uh some lady uh and uh and and, and dr omar you know dr omar moha yeah yeah you've met him yeah. yeah he was also part of the team so we 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 did organize a number of events here and there and then um uh uh it we actually uh again finished our term as the only uh committee over the last like 10 years that had not fallen out by the time they were they were finishing what were people falling out over money money yeah. i think it's that money pocketing the money yes Or like uh, a few other people would pocket here and there and what not but you see a, w- one thing i learned uh and i think it's something i learned through through university uh from first year all the way from first year because like right from first year me and my friends like um or rather my friends and i would live together would uh, share food would share money would share like it was almost like there was uh, money was just a tool like we use it to buy food here and there we share the food we use it like uh, dr mar was telling me the other day that uh, uh, he learned the aspect of buying people lunch all the time from me because i think i learned to see money as a uh, say that he are not there mm-hmm. like i, I won't i won't die hungry because i don't have which money which is very very and, unique uh, in this and, and uh, society that mm. so worships think, money yeah so mm. i think when you are asking me uh, about my schedule and 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 why i don't do low comes and what not i think that's where the mentality came from that let's, I, let's explain I what what low comes are what doctors do uh, uh low comes are when you are employed somewhere you do your shift and then when you're off because doctors are usually off a lot of times uh, because they work extra hours when they are there like they work 24 hour shifts uh for a whole week so they'd be off for maybe another 10 days or something like that at the time when you're working you'd probably uh go beyond the labor the required hours okay the uh, the hours that the labor act or the labor laws require but it's because of your nature as a doctor so now uh it will mean that you'll need some you'll have some time off like you'll ha- your employer will give you some time off later to make up for the extra hours that you did. And so by and large you'll find that doctors work for maybe two weeks non-stop and then they'll be off for a week or two uh, or 10 days. Uh and that's what uh Uhuru was saying that madaktari wa kwangi hospitali and what not. But really it's because when you're on call, you're on call consistently for for more than even 72 hours and what not. So that when you'll be off, you'll be off to compensate for the extra time that you 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 worked so most doctors will be moonlighting most doctors will when they are off work they'll be doing locums here and there uh locums that is they go work now at another private setup where they are paid for by the hour yes and, so, and i think there's uh, there's this talk you know uh when especially specialists yes uh, you find that if you whether you go to kenyatta or you go to the private hospitals around this city 
you find the same doctors yes. maybe that's that's yes that's yeah. that's part of the law coming yeah. yes yeah. it's part of the law coming but uh, uh for consultants is really because consultants are generally not uh employed on a full time basis mm. uh, so they're free to work yeah so they're free to work uh, mm. in different spaces like uh, they're free to consult uh, and anyway if you in your free time you can consult anywhere the only problem arises where there's a consultant who's employed and uh, the time when they should be working at the at the at the, at the, the public facility, public facility they yeah. are moonlighting i think that's that's fraud and uh, and that should be frowned upon uh, but by and large consultants uh, are generally allowed to to consult for different places uh, during their their their, their off time and their so you finish uh, your end yes um, uh, uh, the five years so before we finished because i want to get to 254 hope uh, before we finished my colleague dr moriuki uh is a guy who had vied for vice chair and uh unsuccessfully lost by four votes and uh we were with him in alliance by the he was one of the pentagon members yeah. uh, you, your relationship starts alliance. quite far yes 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 from quite far um so uh dr moriuki uh was quite a pro jubilee by then it was called uh, tna and, and urp uh back in 2013 that we sold into the i believe uh, yes yes and uh and we used to actually fight a lot over it because uh, uh personally I, i i i espoused raila's philosophy uh interestingly i think he persuaded me and at some point i i i, I was of the view of uh, maybe Ju- maybe jubilee is not so bad and what not uh in a bid to try and because there was a time between 2014 and 2017 when uh, there was a lot of negative energy negative publicity with regard to Kenya poor governance like everything bad uh, was being uh, talked of at the time and uh, he felt like uh, he wanted to come up with a platform that tells the the beautiful stories about the country okay that uh, tell, uh, a platform that tells the story of hope mm. that we have and uh, so he started 254 hope as an organization that uh, would uh, work towards uh, uh, showing the beauty of Kenya the, the the history of Kenya that we are proud of and that we like that is never talked about and 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 and, and such like um, such like stories uh, and so we we started we were still students yes mm. we were still students uh, so we made merchandise with kenyan like kenyan flag merchandise and what not to just try really uh, uh, improve the pride in kenya uh, and and we did that for a while for like two years it's around 2019 2018 2019 that we felt like things were not okay like things were not going okay and uh maybe we needed to stop burying our heads in the sand and we had to start this is the uh, way this is during this is the handshake yes this is yeah this is during the handshake time because we felt like uh now there seems to be relative peace but things are not okay that uh in fact it's almost like the two handshake brothers have now colluded to to now rip us all off you see and and and, and so we felt like now we need to start talking we need to start actually asking questions about our governance and i remember one of the first things we we really sat and talked about was the sgr contract cuz there was this whole narrative that uh, the sgr contract was actually had actually placed uh, the port as security mm. and that uh, that could be could be taken away uh, and that uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, the owners of the company that was running the SGR were actually Kenyans who have registered a company in in China and and what not and we were feeling uh, surely we need to have these contracts made public because if these guys are negotiating on behalf of Kenyans at the very least parliament needs to know what you're negotiating you see we cannot just leave it at uh, individuals 
uh especially when we know that these guys could be could be ripping us off so that was among the first things there was talk us of uh, those uh, China roads and bridges whatever yes. like those the real one in China and there was yes. another one registered yes. somewhere with an office in Westlands yes so those are the kind of things that we really wanted to know and uh, we started asking these questions and then came BBI process and uh, i think for us BBI was really the straw that was going to break the camel's back. So what were you doing uh, from t- 2013 up to to 2019 when you kind of shift your focus? Okay. Uh from 2013, I think 2013 to 2016 is when I was in med school. And so it was just the med school politics and I, no, I mean with 2254 hope. No, 254 hope wasn't formed in 2013. It was formed in 2016. 2016 thereabouts so uh between 2016 and 2019 it was uh just uh, uh visiting places taking photos of uh beautiful kenya and posting them and sharing them writing stories about uh our history and uh, uh celebrating people like uh wangari madai and and, and like the thing kipchoge and uh and and, and, and what, like the things that kenya is proud of those are the things we would share uh make merchandise sell to people uh those are the things we were doing largely yeah so come 2018 2019 that's when we actually started getting into the actual activism space and uh being activists for good governance this time you've left you've left uh, med school med school yes graduated in 2016 um uh did my internship at uh, memorial uh, defense forces memorial uh and then uh, uh when i left internship i knew i wanted to make a big a difference and uh i decided to go start a, a private hospital i got my friends to give me money and uh we were able to set up a hospital it's still running in Higa, in yeah. B- Bale. Uh, yes in western yes uh we struggled we've actually struggled quite quite a bit what is uh, your specialization primary health or just uh... primary health yeah primary health uh, yeah and then uh, at the same time that's when we are also now uh, starting to to formalize 254 hope as a as a an activist for good governance for better governance and uh, we sort of uh had a discussion and decided we wanted to sort of uh, create a movement a gradual movement we were not in a rush to try and influence the politics the present politics we were like the real problem with our society is a uh, majority of the people don't even know why they need to be concerned they don't even care and maybe we need to get people to start caring and then after a bit of time maybe 10 15 years we will have enough uh of the population who care enough to want to bring change and then then we can change uh and so we decided we are just going to be doing small things here and there like uh, litigating uh doing uh uh community projects here and there uh Uh, doing write ups academic write ups social write ups and uh disseminating them and hoping that uh, uh people will get the tenor because i may write for instance about the six judges president kenyatta refused to appoint and you may disagree with me or agree with me but if you read it what you're getting is not i'm not interested in you agreeing with me or disagreeing with me i'm interested in you starting to think you realizing that we need to think you see we need to Uh, so those are the things we started doing as a kind of platform of uh, even i when i got into advocacy yeah. uh, was uh, was working with the jiko revolution and later on with moscadia taifa it's realizing that there's a there's a very deliberate attempt to to channel kenyans into a binary either or you either support raila or you support the the other side uhuru or ruto now and raila and yet there are so many other species it's not black and white that is uh, there are grays and then there are colors in between and that uh one of the problems you have with Kenya as Kenyans is their inability to have conversations like the one you're describing where uh it's not necessarily that you want people to agree with you 
you want to be able to put your position out there and people to engage with that position and agree or disagree with it like it is okay to agree and disagree yeah besides there are so many facets of a society that we may disagree on this one thing we may disagree on uh, on uh, say judicial independence but we will agree on food policy you see because the assumption is that we all want was what is best for 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 the country and so even when we disagree we are disagreeing because we are disagreeing on what you think is best and what i think is best we are not disagreeing in the sense that you don't want what is best and i want what is best yeah so th- that's when we started uh, having this discussion so uh, the first people we added on board were uh, uh, contemporary professionals teachers uh, nurses doctors lawyers uh, uh, from different regions and what not and we just wanted this to be a platform for engaging and discussing have you registered the organization no no at that time no. Yeah. no 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 we hadn't and we haven't uh and it's because remember i told you our goal is long term we are not looking to do things now and then our goal is not personalized it's not it's not even about to fight for hope our goal is more of uh, i want to be able to persuade these people here to start thinking about the food policy in this country and to start asking the right questions with regard to food policy because where we are is nobody ever asks any questions the people who are affected most don't know even the questions to ask you see the people who suffer from hunger the people who are most beaten by the economy don't even know what questions to ask they don't know who to ask they don't know why to ask they don't even know that uh, it matters you see so that we remain under the full control the absolute control of whoever is in power mm. politicians the basically. politician and not even if not even all the politician in fact we might remain under the power of the politician who agrees with the bureaucrats in the various offices you see who are themselves removed from the actual consequences of those decisions you see because i i feel like our parliament is clueless our parliament is actually very much the way um the general population is it is so, supposed to be the most powerful institution yeah, according to the 2010 know. constitution like they, they, they are powerful but they don't know things they don't know food policy they don't know what they should do they don't know the right questions to ask they don't know they don't know any of those things so the problem with that is we end up asking the wrong questions or the people who are asking the right questions are in the hidden spaces and they're asking it in academic papers and what not where nobody or in activism or spaces on yes. social media yeah and then being us to employ you to call your person your bayako so who, who like when you when you do this advocacy and I, i ask my guests this question um uh, you're a medical doctor one of the the job that you know pays well uh, relatively initially of course it wasn't paying well and then uh this been a you know a review of the salaries but also if you get into private practice or start a hospital like you have ideally you are better than majority of the society why even bother about policy and who is sleeping hungry and that kind of thing um sometimes i think it's a a sort of narcissism that uh, some of us are born with um uh, uh, because we think we, we 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 can bring some change Uh, I mean I usually ask myself who do we think we are uh, that 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 will take on bigger courses and one but uh, part of it is, is and just how, that's how we probably were born or brought up and uh, we ended up finding ourselves in this space I've always argued that uh, uh, for someone to think they can be the president of Kenya or the president of America a person must be a very serious narcissist because who do you think you are uh, but so I guess that's uh that's the background that r- brought me here uh, i've always had this uh uh intention or this desire to 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 make impact and uh, uh that's why i started a hospital instead of getting uh, uh getting a job like yeah and that's the question and ideally you now you started a hospital yes in the double progression in kenya especially with someone with your Uh, marketing skills charisma uh, you should be maybe you now having one of the biggest private hospitals in Kenya and making billions and billions no, business is hard first of all 
um, uh, business has been quite quite hard, especially Kwanza with COVID and whatnot. It's not been uh, the best environment, and we, truthfully, I have struggled in the business space. But I didn't mind. Uh, you know, when you're doing something you enjoy, you don't even feel it. You don't even feel the struggle. So part of uh, me going to set up a hospital instead of going to get employment was because I felt like with a hospital, I'll make a bigger impact. I will serve a bigger community and whatnot. It's the same reason why I prefer to be to be an activist than to be a bureaucrat. A bureaucrat, you, you, you're governed by the systems that are already there. As an activist, you actually are making a new world. And uh, I feel like as an activist for good governance, I will, and policy issues here and there, I will probably make a bigger impact than I would in a clinic, uh, seeing one patient at a time. I'd rather be somewhere advocating for better public health, uh, advocating for better uh, uh, health policies, and, 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 and so on and so forth, than in a clinic seeing uh one patient at a time I, and i think it's just a it's it's part of character i'm not saying that the person who's in a clinic is doing any less of of work that's it's why just who you are saying, yeah, yeah. That's why i started by saying maybe it's a sort of narcissism that uh that i that that, that i have and uh and yeah and, and uh your, your your friend uh and partner dr Muryoki, yes is uh i think when i met the two of you um, is in uh, KMPU politics. Yes. Did you ever get into uh, those politics for the medical profession outside uh, the university? Yes. Uh, I've actually been a member, a uh, uh, sitting member of a KMA Nairobi division, a council member. Uh, I've been quite an active participant in uh, KMPDU. And I started right when I was uh, the president of medical students. Uh, I partnered with KMPDU uh, for many of the, the demonstrations they had. Uh, I was actually the one leading the students in those demonstrations. Uh, uh, I have been participating in the last two, three years actively in trying to, to uh, make KMPDU, like improve the internal governance of KMPDU. Uh, and, 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 and I must say that I'm quite disappointed myself. Uh, I'm actually quite disillusioned right now because um, I have witnessed uh, outright uh, fraud uh, on, 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 on the members of KMPDU uh, over the last three years where we had these elections. The elections were outright a sham uh they were registered uh, uh, uh no they were contested successfully uh, uh another sham was done by the same same people uh, imagine a situation where a person whose election has been nullified because it was a sham uh, uh, uh appoints themselves to conduct a fresh election where they are contesting gives a one day notice to sort of uh, uh, a one-day notice to conduct that online election. Uh, the online election happens. They count the votes. They declare themselves winners. They take the same same uh, results to the registrar of trade unions to register the results. And then it happens that the registrar of trade unions refuses because the registrar of trade unions had actually uh, directed how the election should be done. And actually, she refused because some of the other uh, parties who had contested the first results uh, wrote to the registrar and just explained to the registrar that uh, that election has not been done in accordance with our union constitution at all. Uh, so the registrar gave a very, very robust reasons for refusing. Uh, these guys decided to go to court to compel the registrar to register these people. Okay, And this is where I get most disappointed. And, uh, and, 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 and one day, uh, someone needs to do something about it. So, uh, these guys collude with advocates at the AG's office. Because remember, the advocates at the AG's office are the ones supposed to, to represent any public office. 
So what happens is the registrar who refused to register them, her term comes to an end. So there's no registrar in office. So what the council at the AG's office do, they collude with these impugned officials who are trying to get themselves registered to file a case in court so that these officials file a case in court. They cite the registrar as a respondent. Okay. And then they get the advocates from the AG's office to represent the registrar and then they compromise the case. Okay. So what happened is we quickly got wind of what was happening and uh, we advised the guys who had initially nullified the election in court to apply to be interested parties in this matter. They apply and you can even see from how the judge is conducting this case that even the judge is compromised. You can even like the judge was so hostile to these new guys who have applied to be to be enjoined um, uh, uh, and, and, and just uh, like the outcome was predetermined. Exactly. So now remember there is no registrar in office. Okay. But the case is going on. And as we didn't know there was no registrar in office. Okay. These other parties didn't know there was no registrar in office. In fact, they thought the registrar is colluding with these guys when they were joining. Then we realized, no, there's no registrar in office. So what happened is, uh, once these guys became uh, parties to this case, see now the case can't be compromised easily because now they are new parties. The council supposed to be representing the respondent who is the registrar who's been sued for not registering them decides that I have been given instructions that we will not be defending this case. So the case will proceed with only submissions from the guys who've sued the registrar and the interested parties who've applied to be enjoined. Surely what case is there? I mean, the case is the registrars to explain why she has not, the office of the registrar to explain why they have not registered these guys. And they had given very robust reasons, you see. But that office, their counsel is saying that they will not be responding. So I, I found that very absurd. So I decided at the beginning of January this year, I will go to the registrar's office myself and find out why you as a public officer would make a decision. And then when that decision is contested, you will say you will not um, respond to it. So when I went, there was now a new registrar in office who was actually in acting capacity. The new registrar didn't even know there was a case going on in court. <laughs> So Kenya he had not been told, uh, yet it's the registrar who's been sued. So the council at the AG's office are continuing with a case without instructions and purporting to represent an, a public officer. So I told the registrar, then this needs to be brought to the attention of the court. But the registrar can't go to court except through the council at the, at the AG's office because the registrar, uh, as an officer, I think it's against, uh, it's, it's misconduct if you go representing yourself in court. So the registrar writes to the AG's office asking that, uh, first of all, uh, first the registrar advice that I write, that it, it means there's a problem that we write formally to the AG's office asking what is happening. And number two, she too will write and find out what's going on. Okay. Internally at the AG's office, they frustrate those letters. Initially at some point, the letter even disappeared. Um, uh, and this council is continuing to appear for the registrar and saying that they've not been, I mean, they've been given instructions not to respond. So eventually, the judge actually rules in favor of these guys that they should be registered. That election that I've told you, okay, the judge rules that the registrar has no power to refuse to register uh, officials. Uh, once an election has been done, even if that election has not been done in accordance with the, with the law. Okay. And then, these First, are the high courts. Yes, the, 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 yeah, the employment and labor employment relations and court. Yeah. Okay, so remember, the registrar has never been represented in court. So they they come and serve the registrar with this order, and the registrar tells them, "I have never been heard in this matter because I never knew this case was going on. I only found out now from when you're serving me these these papers." So the registrar writes back to the AG's office and tells them, "I have been given these documents." Uh, uh, that purport to be a court order where I was never heard. I want you to file for review. They refuse to file for review totally. In fact, and, and, and this is where you're going to, you're going to really wonder um, uh, the extent of corruption that we have. So the registrar has asked them to file for review. They have refused. Okay. Instead, they have advised the 
union officials who've, who've won to file for contempt against the registrar, that the registrar has refused to register them in accordance with the court order. Okay? So the registrar is served with contempt proceedings, but she can't appear because she's a public officer. It is the AG supposed to appear. So the AG's counsel appears in court, and what does this AG's counsel tell the court? That I have advised the registrar to register these people, and the registrar has refused. refused. So this is the person supposed to be the advocate for the registrar, but this advocate for the registrar is actually hostile to the registrar. It's like he's, uh, he's acting for... So, for so, so this, he, these officials. Yes, so he eventually says that uh, I am no longer going to act for the registrar. I will only act for the Commissioner of Labor. Okay? But you're saying this, yet you appeared, you entered appearance for the registrar. Nobody else can come on, on, on. So he fails to give a response to the contempt, fails to give any submissions for the contempt, so that it ends up being, it is these other interested parties that are actually responding for the registrar. On the day when uh, the registrar is called to appear in person, the advocate supposed to be representing the registrar tells the court that the registrar is in cahoots with these independent parties to frustrate the court order that was issued. And then you see the whole justice system is almost like colluding to actually make sure this thing... Because the other thing when the order was issued... When that order, when the judgment was finally given, it was given at a time when uh, uh, the other independent parties had actually uh, formally asked for the judge to recuse herself. The judge was handling the matter to recuse herself because she has a prior relationship with uh, some of these officials. Okay. And the day when we were expecting the judge to come and issue a ruling on recusal, she came and first issued a ruling on recusal. And then went ahead and gave a judgment on the matter without giving the parties a chance to, to question whether they will appeal the recusal or not. You see? And, and we looked at it and we were like, okay, what's going on here? Is it an attempt to capture the union by the state? Um, uh, because that's, there's a pattern. You in, remember with a few unions, including I, I, that and that kind of yes. thing. Oh, no, what I just think is, uh, is, is, is just we are just a corrupt society. Okay, we're just a corrupt society and people can buy whoever they want to buy. Now, what the capture that usually happens usually takes advantage of the fact that we are a corrupt society. Okay, so the state will capture the union because you see, once you don't have legitimacy, once you don't have legitimacy, you would want to legitimize yourself. So you will, you will go into bed with anyone who's willing to give you legitimacy. You will go to bed with the state because you want them to recognize you. You see, and that is what now is going to happen even with our union. Because these guys want legitimacy. Uh, if they are given legitimacy, in fact, right now, the only reason uh, probably um, uh, our union has not um, uh, essentially, or the state has not tried to, to, to capture the union is because our union actually actively campaigned for Raila Odinga. They, they actually joined the campaigns and, uh, and I think they fell out with the, with the Kenya Kwanzaa. So these officials, are they in office now? Yeah, they're in office. In fact, the registrar has, was almost being taken to jail. The registrar, the registrar came to appear in court and the court was so hostile to her. I really wondered, this is someone who's telling you they have not been represented. They didn't know this case was going on. This is someone who's not given any submissions up to now. Okay? They are telling you that they were never heard. They, were, they didn't know the case was going on. Their advocate is obviously hostile to her. She's here now unrepresented. But the judge was so hostile and uh, the registrar just decided it's okay. You know, um, uh, in Kenya, see, 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 angu, peke angu. <laughs> and if the whole process has gone through the justice system and the court has said we register them, I mean, if I don't register them, it now starts looking like I have an interest when I don't. I remember I, I went to her office and uh, she really sympathized with us but you i also sympathized with her because she was really trying to do the right thing she was trying to do the right thing and she was asking the right questions but uh the system had just been been uh convoluted and uh, and, and and compromised and and there's nothing we can do about it and so i got very disappointed that that you can actually want to do the right thing you can have people wanting to do the right thing and they can just fail and i, and I guess this is where i take you back to 2019 I came to know you um, during the BBI case. So, and you told us that uh, in 2019, 254 Hope 
had lost hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially, uh, and you and Dr. Murioke decide that uh, we need to change, you need to change your focus. Uh, so how does that happen so that you end up, and I can see your passion from just that presentation that you've just done, your passion in law, you know, where did that come from? I know your dad was a lawyer, but you're a trained medical doctor. And then uh, I think what caught my fascination was you in the BBI, in the court, representing 254 Hope and appearing in person, not through, through a lawyer. How, so how do, what is the period between 2019 to the point where you appear in the, in the, in the, in the court? And what is that process of, what, what, what did, where did you learn law? Uh, my interest in law didn't start in 2019. Uh, in fact, at some point, I probably had contemplated going to law school, uh, uh, but I eventually settled on, on med school. Uh, I'm one of the few people of, uh, I, I believe, of my generation in 2010 who actually read the entire constitution in 2010. Uh, this new constitution. I read it from page to page. Uh, uh, by then, I was still quite impressionable and uh, uh, didn't really have my own philosophy about it, uh, but I read it. Um, I remember at some point in 2010, writing a letter to the Attorney General's office. By then, it was Amos Wako. A letter... Uh, outlining the illegal, uh, the unlawful manner in which uh, the flower farms in Naivasha are, are uh, conducting business. They are polluting our waters, they are using chemicals, and they are um, abusing the staff. And uh, I wanted the AG to intervene. 2010, you in high school? No, I finished high school in just nine. Okay. So 2010 was that. Okay. Yes. okay. I wrote it. And I remember sending it. Uh, it was a, a long typed letter. Uh, those days I'll just go and give it. I thought that's how things work. So I gave it, but I never received, I didn't even write my contacts there. I've never received any response. I've, I, I never received any response or any, or any acknowledgement or, or whatnot. So I think I already had a, sort of like a public spirit even then. I was already starting to be public spirited. Um, while in med school, one of the things that uh, really helped me during my campaigns is that prior to my to my vying in 2013, between 2014 and 2015, the entire of 2014 and 2015, I led a team to revise the constitution of the association. And we drafted it word for word. We actually were like a committee of experts. We met every single Thursday to draft the constitution of the Association of Medical Students. And... Uh, and, and, and it was ready in June uh, 2015, just before now we started the campaigns. Uh, and I remember we had an interesting situation where the same committee that had appointed me and uh, appointed this team to uh, make a new constitution, okay? And we did a robust public participation and, and even now called a referendum for guys to vote on it. That same committee now was frustrating the enactment of that constitution uh, uh, because they felt like if it is enacted, if it succeeds, I will take credit for it and it will favor me when I'm vying during the election. So actually that constitution was never enacted. Like we called for a referendum. Uh, <laughs> it was an interesting out, uh, interplay of things. Actually the guys for yes won. Okay. But right on the floor of the house, um, uh, they made a, de a, a decision that for the new constitution to win, it has to win two-thirds majority of the people in the room. Okay? We still won <laughs> by two-thirds. But then, again, on the floor of the house, they said, spoiled votes will count. So I told them, but the Supreme Court already told us, spoiled votes don't count. Okay? But then they decided it, they will count because those guys are in the room. Of course, I, th I think the Supreme Court was wrong, by the way, with that decision. But, um, but, 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 but yeah, so we ended up losing by one vote. The Constitution was never enacted. Interestingly, I ended up getting elected to be president under the old Constitution, which allowed so much power and so much control by the president uh, because the other Constitution did not have any restraints on the, on the powers of the chairperson. The chairperson could literally withdraw all the money in their account and whatnot and whatnot. So 
the new constitution that we were proposing actually had brought those checks. And remember, I was going to buy anyway. So these checks were also going to apply to me. These guys did their machinations. The new constitution failed. So now I got elected. With the, with the powers exactly. that... Exactly. <laughs> and now some of them were telling me to change. I told them I'm not changing. If you want to change the constitution, start again. Start that process that we did. Because see, we went to a ballot and uh, guys said that uh, they didn't want a new constitution. And I, I can't start changing that that determination now because that would be abusing my powers. You know, that, that's intrigue. So intrigue in high school, intrigue yeah. uh, in uh, university electoral politics. Yeah. And and it's uh, intrigue in camp in new politics, yeah. and it's playing. It's taking the same, yeah, the same, the same nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the same play gameplay yes. that is happening. Yes, whereby you are people who, who want power. Yes, uh, they want to be in the status quo, and they are willing to manipulate systems yes. to make sure that they remain in the status quo, yes. and all for the good of the people. Yeah, for their own good. Yeah. So, so I remember, uh, guys, were, even my supporters were telling me now that uh, you've now you're now president, you are now implement that constitution you had worked on because it was a really robust constitution. Uh, I still have it in my laptop. Do you know whether uh, they ever, yeah. after you left, whether they ever really reviewed the constitution? No, they didn't. You know, that thing requires sacrifice, it requires a lot of sacrifice. We used to meet every single Thursday, uh, after school for two, almost two years. Every single Thursday, with a team consisting of Sylvia Kairu, um, uh, 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 Mogusu, Mogusu who died. Yes, he was part of that team, and uh, and uh, and a number of, uh, of 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 us. And we would meet and argue over uh, what rights should be there, who should be a member, and why, and what not. And uh, and so when it failed, it was really a disappointment. And I remember just shelving it. And I wrote a very moving letter to the outgoing president, the president then, and told them that uh, you have the last word as far as whether that constitution passed or didn't pass. Because you, uh, you, you're telling us we have to pass it by a two-thirds majority. That's unreasonable. But anyway, it's okay. We still voted, and the two-thirds still won. But then now you're telling us you want people who opted not to vote to count because they were in the room, and they opted not to vote. Um, uh, and, and, and that's the only way you're going to make us not get to two thirds. Uh, and if you do that, it's okay. You'll have betrayed, first of all, all the work we have done for the last two years. And you'll be betraying these people because you know that this constitution is actually better. Because we're talking better. about good governance yeah. um, and, and alternative leadership. And, and what basically you're describing is that, uh, is it that our bad habits are reflected at the national level? Or is it the bad habits of the national level that are reflected in our institutions? I think it's an interplay of both. It's an interplay of both. Even at the family setup, even at the family setup, there are very many people are traumatized from their upbringing. And it's because even at the family setup, there was a certain selfishness, a certain uh, uh, individualistic way of doing things. Uh, and, 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 and so that's what we were taught. So it plays out in our lives. And uh, whenever you have an opportunity to have one over the next person, you take it, you see. And so by the time it's showing at the national level, it's really a reflection of what we are as a society, not even as a society in general, but as a society, as individuals. But that's what sounds like narcissism. What you're it doing is. is not narcissism. It's the, it's the, because you're like going against the grain and uh, maybe some people have referred to it as narcissistic for act activists and people who stand up. But actually what you've just described, that selfishness in our society, in our families, in our politics, is actually what I would consider narcissism. Yes, um, mm. uh, I, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I agree yeah. with you. Um, but, so but you're yeah. not a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, although you stand your ground, I don't yeah. think that is uh, narcissism. Yeah. Although yeah, I've it, always wanted as an activist, like, it's like it's Tanya Nili, Ali Dituma, what yeah. right do I have? I think most activists do ask themselves that. Right?